This video is brought to you by KJ Self Care, where all products are made with your best interests at heart, free of harsh chemicals and preservation that are handmade with love. Follow KJ Self Care on Instagram at KJ Self Care CEO and visit the website at KJ Self Care CO.com. That's KJ Self Care. Give your body some TLC. You deserve it. Yo, 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 welcome to the Concrete Show, man. It's your boy, Solo. We got another special edition of the Canes unit. I'm saying got my guys, Kane Duck from Miami Flow. Got my boy, John, from Kane's blog. I'm saying give them a subscribe to their channel. I'll put the link to their channels in the description box. You know what I'm saying? Show my guys some love, man. But, fellas, man, we have some good news. I believe we went, we did a show last week, and then right after... Some good news popped up. We didn't really get a chance to address it as a uh, as a unit, as a Canes unit, no pun intended. I'm saying, but we got T Rob. You know I'm saying, let's go over his resume a little bit. I'm saying, he started um, as a GA at Auburn and was under Will Muschamp. Uh, Muschamp was in DC there in 2006. He spent two seasons there. Um, after he left Auburn, he was a bit of a journeyman. You know, he kind of traveled before uh, reunited with Ch- Muschamp at University of Florida in 2011 as a DB coach. Uh, he pretty much followed Muschamp to Auburn after Muschamp got let go from Florida in 2015. Muschamp was DC at Auburn, pretty much assumed the same role. Uh, T. Rob ended up being the DB coach. And once again, followed Muschamp. Uh, to be Muschamp's DC at the Muschamp, Will Muschamp um, assumed the head coach position at South Carolina, um, T. Ross first and only DC gig. So we all know Muschamp is a pretty good uh, defense coordinator. I'm saying and for him to have T. Rob alongside with him, I'm saying that shows he has a lot of trust and that, that says a lot. I'm saying fast forward to 2020, Muschamp gets fired and we're here today. T. Rob is now Kane. So uh, he was pretty much everybody's dream pick. I'm saying every time his name popped up, it kind of seemed unreal, especially with the bag that he wanted. I'm saying he's replacing Rump as a uh, DB coach. Uh, by the way, Rump, I heard from the Canesville guy, it was more of a, I'm saying I heard Rump's contract end up expiring. So I'm saying for the Rump guys, you know what I'm saying we could feel a little better about the situation. I'm saying I guess it was mutual. He didn't want to come back. Maybe they didn't want him back. Who knows? But uh, what do you guys thoughts on T Rock, man? What do you guys think he'll bring to the DB room? I'm saying we'll start with Kane though. I mean, I think it's a home run hire. You know, it's it, the guy. I mean, his resume speaks for himself. But what I really like, because I was a little nervous when we lost Banda, right? As far as the recruiting stuff goes, this guy. I mean, we just upgraded, and we upgraded a lot. You know, he's well respected. I, I, I was completely just excited, dude. I was losing my mind. That's the kind of hire I was I was hoping for, you know, a big name like that. And I like that he's taking the safeties and the corners, you know, not just the corners. I really like that a lot. Um, go ahead. I was, I, I was kind of wondering about that, too. I was like, is he going to – I'm saying they said he came in as a DB coach. So I was like, is he just going to take the corners or he's going to take the corners and the safety? That was a big question in my head. Yeah, no, uh, for me, and, and I think there's, you know, a, you know, I'm sure we're going to get into some coaching stuff in a little bit, but uh, there could be more happening with him. You know, I don't know. What do you think, John? Uh, I totally agree. Home run higher. Um, the fact that they were, you know, willing to pay him what they want, what pay him what he wanted and everything. Uh, I, I feel like his role is just going to be, is going to be more than just that of a DB's coach. I think he's going to have obviously a big role in recruiting. Um, and they just, you know, they, they valued him that much. Obviously they, they think he can bring that much to the table. Uh, and also I've noticed in the past, you know, 10 to 15 years, it seems like, you know, you get an assistant, you get a coordinator or whatever. That's like, we get excited about their, their ability to recruit, but then technique and things like that from that position group might suffer, or then we'll hire a guy that's good on technique, but maybe, it suffered in recruiting. We haven't been able to get a guy, at least that I can remember, that's awesome. At- yeah. 
And this guy, I mean, I don't, I don't even have to go into his, his resume as a recruiter, like who he's gotten, but also who he's developed. He's developed those guys into first and second round picks and also three-star guys into first, second, third round picks. So that I'm excited about. And also I saw, I forgot who posted it, a video on Twitter. Um, I think it's from a few years back, or I, I'm not sure how old the video is, but they were interviewing him about what he plans to do. Like what, what's his plan with the DBs? And he's like, Oh, 60 to 70% of the time we bump and run, we play up on the line. That's, that's how we play here. I was like, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in the Al golden era, we're 10 yards off the ball in the Randy Shannon era. It was like, whatever we felt like doing that day. So finally they're bringing that aggressive style back. It seems like. Yeah. It seems like we've been playing off the ball for like, Probably since I was born, man. Like, as long as I can <laughs> remember, I just get so annoying. I'm like, stop giving up the five yard, 10 yards comeback, man. But you know I'm saying, like I said, we end up dropping the bag on them, man. But um, what does this tell you guys about Miami? Like, that we drop bags on a, on a coach like this, whatever, that we're willing to spend money on a football team. You know what I'm saying, is that more to Manny or more to the president. Like, all right, it's time to catch up with these SEC programs. Like, yeah, where did you, I right, we, we got our reputation from being badasses, but we know that college football is transforming. I'm saying, I hate I hate to bring up other schools like Alabama, et cetera. You know what I'm saying? I see guys saying, why can't we be out there? And I'm saying, we're tough guys. But I'm like, it's kind of beyond that now. You know what I'm saying, it's about the facilities. You know what I'm saying, can you breed machines, man? You know, are you willing to put the money in that? I'm saying, but what does that tell you guys about Miami? Like, do you think we're going on the on the upward slope now as far as competing with these other schools, as far as facilities and the money that we're willing to pay to win at football? We'll start with um, John. Uh, yeah, I think it's a great sign because I was I was shocked when I heard that Blake James told you know I heard Blake James told Manny that yeah hey we're money's no object go hire who you need to hire. Um, that was music to my ears because I, all I've heard for the last 15, 20 years is the opposite, is that, you know, the coaches don't have the backing of the, the school and the trustees and all that crap that we've heard for years. But yeah, that, it shows me they're willing to spend. Um, now you got an indoor practice facility, which is great. Um, now you got, you know, the facilities just in general over the past five to seven years have improved tremendously. So yeah, I think in that regard, we're heading in the right direction, but also spending that money, you got to make sure it land the right guys. And hopefully that's what they're doing right now. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, there was reported behind the scenes, like, I guess uh, there was rumblings. I'll just say that there was a couple meetings before Manny got the green light about the money. And it, I don't know if I'm going to give, the credit to Blake James. I think from things that I've heard is that the board of trustees would just put pressure on them and like, look, go get a guy, go get guys. We're going to spend the money and kind of like an ultimatum, like basically I need you to make changes and you can't use monies as, as an excuse. So, and also I want to give a little credit to Mark Rick because I think Mark Rick has a lot to do with where we're at today in our program. I mean, we all know how big he was for the facility, right? But I just think he brought, he might have not brought a championship mindset, but he definitely, in my opinion, brought a top program mindset, you know? And I think he really had a lot to do with where we are today as far as how we're moving. You know, and maybe not, you know, the, whatever his issues with the coaching, all that, I'm not getting into that. But I think Mark Rick should get a lot of – I would give Mark Rick credit because I think that he made some tough – he even put his own money down. You know, like, that's crazy, like, to help the program. And I think that uh, Manny's just running with it. Yeah, I definitely agree with that Mark Rick part. He definitely laid down the foundation. You know what I'm saying that you could tell Manny picked a couple of things from Mark Rick. I'm saying people could say all they all they want about Mark Rick. Oh, these are Mark Rick guys, his offense, et cetera. But I'm saying the guy's been, he has a hell of a resume at an SEC school, University of Georgia. I'm saying he's pretty much put them back on the map. 
what I'm saying? And Kirby Smart just came in and did what he did, albeit he got hella guys transferring right now. But, <laughs> but now that we know um, Kevin Stills headed to Tennessee, you know what I'm saying? That was another dream scenario for us, you know what I'm saying? That I wish we could have fulfilled. I'm saying, who was on you guys' DC list? I'm saying, is it gonna, or do you think it's gonna be another code DC thing? I'm like T Rob and Blake Baker calling plays, or is Manny taking over? I'm saying, who and who are you guys looking for to replace Todd Stroud? You wanna go, John? Um, you got it. Um, I think, you know, I, everybody's following what's going on behind the scenes and on social media, what's real, what's not. Yeah. I do know through you know from people that I trust that there is another change coming. Um I don't know who is going to replace this person. You know, it seems like uh, the name that's been consistent. I don't think it's ever gotten real hot, but it's been it's Jess Simpson, right? It's kind of always been around. You know, it's never been like that's the guy, but it's like I think it might be this guy. This guy is in the mix, you know. Um so for me, I think there's a boring way to look at this. Just Simpson gets hired, which is, it's a good hire. It's not the sexy hire, right? It's not the sexy hire, but it's a good hire. And I think Manny calls the defense, right? But I also think, you know, Chris Wilson could still be in play, you know, and Partridge could still be in play. Um, and then there could be a secret, like, that, you know, maybe they're, maybe Miami's just putting all this out there just to deflect what's really going on. I, the truth is, I would love to give you guys a better answer because I'm tr- I'm digging. When I tell you I'm digging, I'm digging, yeah. and I'm getting pulled in all different directions. So I can't say anything with certainty. The only thing I can say that's been consistent is Jess Simpson. Like that name has been consistent throughout the whole time. Now, would I bet money on that? Absolutely not. <laughs> but that's where I stand. Uh, John, what do you think? Um. Yeah, that's that's what I'm I'm hearing a lot of Jess Simpson lately, and look, I would be totally okay with that hire. I'm right there with you. Um, I'd be okay with all three hires because I think each brings something different to the table. First of all, uh, Chris Wilson, you know, he's the one that that coached with the Philadelphia Eagles their Super Bowl year. He's been with Oklahoma, USC, all these huge programs. He has a great resume, and imagine him walking into a into a kid's home or zoom meeting or whatever they're doing now. And he's got that Super Bowl ring on his finger. Yeah. Big. That was a lot of weight. And, and I heard he's a good recruiter. So that's good. Um, Partridge also amazing resume. Look at the guys he's cranked out at. He's helped crank out at Pittsburgh and other schools over the years. And Jess Simpson, um, NFL experience. Um, and you know, also a great resume, but we've actually seen him coach here already. And, in 2018, we had the number four defense in the country. Yeah, yeah. A lot of it was because of the D-line play. Specifically, <laughs> a lot of it was Gerald Willis. That, that was the year he was just dominating. And I don't know how much of that had to do with Jess Simpson. He should get some credit for it. But the, just the D-line was just eating that year. Um, and, and, yeah, like maybe he had something to do with that. So, honestly, I'm okay with any of those three hires. So, we'll see. Yeah, I'm with John. I'm with, I'm okay with any of those three hires also, you know I'm saying. But I do think Chris Wilson, uh, he might stay at Colorado because I heard they might promote him to D.C., you know what I'm saying? So that could be out of the question. And um, the guy from Pitt, I mean, it's a little hard to see him leave just because I don't think anything major happened at Pitt, you know what I'm saying, I guess, unless we throw a bag at him, you know what I'm saying? But um, as Kane Dub said, the consistent name has been Jess Simpson. And as John said, we got to give him credit for, you know what I'm saying, the D-line, well, Gerald Willis, whatever. You can say Gerald Willis got him a job in the NFL, but I mean, we still got to give him credit for that, you know what I'm saying, because the D-line was wreaking havoc. But, um, you gonna, hey, Concrete, do you think maybe the boys know something? Because, uh, and I know we're going to get into this. I don't know if you want to wait, but the two names that said they're coming back today happen to play the mm. same position. Yep, yep. I, I think I, I do think they know something. I think you know what I'm saying uh, with the I guys. Mean, why would that, they come back? Why would yeah. they come back if it's not a good hire? Yep. And then with the guys that the guy that we think is coming in, you know what I'm saying I don't see him coming um, without T Rob without the T Rob thing. And we heard that he was leaving the portal 
um, that he's going to the portal a while ago. So I think, yeah, I think they know something. You know it's weird though, right? I mean, like the two guys today that announced play the same position, play the and same it's position. right around the same time that we're gonna hear about a hire. Yep. And Todd Stroud is hell of a coach. You know what I'm saying? If a, usually a coach like that leaves, you know what I'm saying? Um, the players leave. Yeah, that lets me know that it might be Jess Simpson. That's just my gut because both those guys were coached by Jess Simpson a couple of years ago. Yep. yep. Everybody loved them from what I heard. So yep. I heard the same thing. I, I heard the same thing. They hear he's coming back. I That gives me – my gut tells me it's probably him. Yeah, it's going to be some good coach, at least. You know what I'm saying? But before we get into portal, you know what I'm saying? We have to talk about what the portal took from us. You know what I'm saying? We lost Patrick Joyner, who went to Utah State with Banda. You know what I'm saying? I'm happy for him. You know what I'm saying? We also lost um, Cozy Perry, um, a fan favorite down in Miami. You know what I'm saying? I was, I'm a fan of Nicozy. I like him. You know what I'm saying? I like that he was about this U. You know and I'm saying? I'm proud of what he did the Oklahoma State game. You know, he got a lot of slack. I'm saying these past couple of years, you no know, 2018, he had, I'm saying he's been a kid pretty much. I'm saying in 2019, he had his inconsistency, but I, I was always still down with him, man. I, I kind of hope he had started uh, the whole 2019 year after Jerry Williams had his fall off, man. But you guys got any final goodbyes you want to get a Perry? Yeah. Yeah, man. I wish him the best of luck. And uh, it's a shame it, it didn't, quite work out like we hoped it would um because that was mark rick's like number one guy that's the guy he wanted coming out of high school he didn't want anybody else like that's the guy i want running my offense and uh he had all the ability physically to do it he just you know had to get the knuckleheadedness out of the way (laughs) and uh and part it was partly that and also they were trying to make him do certain things that he's not used to he is a spread style off uh quarterback that he just slings that rock like he's like a Dan Marino style quarterback he's a gunslinger let him do that and he will flourish you saw him do it like two three four times in his career where we're down we need points and he throws four touchdowns and a half yeah Yeah, I I agree with you I think something that's not brought up enough when we talk about Cozy is Cozy was here what four years yep 17 17, 18 19 yeah four years Oh, I think we lost Kane up. He froze up a little bit on us. He'll come back in a second. But yeah, Cozy, yeah, yeah I, Cozy was here four years. He came in 2017, redshirted, played in 18, played in 19. Yeah. Yeah. Four yeah, years. Mark, I heard he, um, I didn't know he was committed to Al Golden like a while ago, and he was thinking about decommitting, and then Rick got him to come back or something. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, I heard that. I forgot. Damn, I think. I think the Canesville guy said that too, man. But that was that was pretty interesting. I'm like, dang, he'd be committed. I was like, yeah, he must have been like a freshman or something. I was like, I'll go to that early. But one thing about Cozy, he always had a nice deep ball, man. But <laughs> oh yeah, had a pretty deep ball. Had a cannon for an arm. I mean, still yeah. has a cannon for an arm. Uh, yeah. You wouldn't think by looking at him, you think you know he's kind of a skinny kid, but no, he has a freaking cannon. He has an NFL yeah. arm. That's crazy. Like a lot of those skinny kids, man, they be, they have like, they always okay. have a cannon, man. Sorry. I'm looking at my Wi Fi. I have all the bars. I don't know. What I was going to say was, um, how many different offenses did Cozy have to learn? <laughs> we, we've screwed up a lot of kids over the years. I mean, Kyle Wright, I think that wasn't the main issue with Kyle Wright, but three offensive coordinators that added to it. Um, he had, he had other problems, but Kirby Freeman, four-star recruit, bunch of offensive coordinators. Could they, I think Kirby Freeman, they just couldn't figure out what to do with him. Um, but, yeah, that, that, that could definitely wreck a kid's um, career, unfortunately. Yep, yep. Yep. Um, so far on the transfer portal, guys, we got um, DeAndre Johnson, I'm saying who we talked about last week. Now we got my guy, my pick that I wanted, you know what I'm saying, that we talked about last week, um, Charleston Rambo. You know I'm saying the transfer out of OU, chose to be a Miami Hurricane, you know I'm saying. He had a great 2019 year at 700 plus yards. Uh, and that's why he was playing with CeeDee Lamb, you know I'm saying. So he was 
the second or third guy. You know what I'm saying, but in 2020, he had a big drop off. You know what I'm saying he only had 312 receiving yards, and we were banking on the right receiver in the portal. You know what I'm saying we all had our picks, whatever. It just happened. Rambo was my pick, and then we got him. But are you guys happy that we picked up Rambo, or do you think judging off of 2020 that we got another six and eight? I feel like you're rubbing it in a little bit that you were right. I don't know. I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting a little vibe that you're like, I'm just letting y'all know. That's like hey. just reminding y'all that's my pick, you know? Yeah, it's I just, think I know something, man. I think I know something y'all don't know, man. I think I... No. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I once we got him, I, I literally just started watching. I wanted to go. I wanted to know everything I could about him. And I'll tell you what. Potentially, he has special ability, you know? I, I definitely think he has the tools. He's got good size. He's got really good speed. Um, I, I saw him catch balls from all different areas, across the middle, over the shoulder, contested catches. Uh, I saw a little breakaway speed, you know. So I feel better about him than I did at this time last week. And maybe maybe it's because I didn't do my homework as good as I should have on him. But in, in full disclosure, I feel a lot better what I when I when I did a little more research on him, I think he's gonna. I mean, he's definitely gonna contribute. Like he's gonna he's gonna get snaps. I don't see how that guy doesn't get snaps. But I don't know, man. I really like X. I like Smith. I like Redding. I really like those yeah. guys too. And Harley's gonna start, so we already know that. Mm -hmm. John, what do you think? Uh, I like the pick. It's definitely an upgrade. He blows the top off the defense, which you need someone on the field to do that. Um, while he doesn't look like the most physical guy, he, he can fight for the ball. He can, he can make, I mean, he's not Megatron or anything, but he's going to make the contested catch, uh, which we have been sorely lacking the last few years, except for KJ Osborne. He's the only one. Uh, so yeah, I, I like the pickup, man. He's another big play threat. So right now, the way it looks, it's going to be probably him starting on one end, Harley at the slot. And I'm thinking the other starter is going to be Keyshawn Smith. Well, I hope it's going to be Keyshawn Smith. Um, but yeah, that's I, I I like that. And then behind them, you got all that depth. You got Xavier Restrepo. You got Michael Redding. Then the guys coming in, Brandon Smith. Um, who else? Um, Bashard Smith. Oh, Bashard Smith. Sorry. Um, yeah. Romello. Romello Brinson. Romello uh, Brinson. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, we. We got an influx of talent coming in. We're we're loaded. It reminds me of the early the early Randy Shannon era when he got all those he got like seven or eight receivers in one class, and it was like it was a feeding frenzy, and every guy was more talented than the next. So the only thing is they were young, but these guys have veterans in Harley and now and now Rambo coming in to lead them. So that's good. And Rob Likens coaching them. So yeah, a lot of reasons to be excited there. Yeah, that Randy Center area, they kind of – I remember um, Sam Shields came in. They cut, They had to move him in the corner. Running out there was Johnson. Uh, yeah, Adair Johnson, LeBron Bird, Benjamin, LeBron Collier. It was, yeah, we were stacked, man. But, mm -hmm. John, I liked how you didn't mention uh, um, 6 and 8 at all. Uh, Pope or Wiggins. I'm like, damn, where, where they where they fit at it? <laughs> I didn't hey. see them in the bowl game either. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I hope I hope that Rambo comes in. You know I'm saying I hope that nothing is given to him. I hope uh, those 2020 guys, man, and the 2021 guys, like they make him earn that spot. You know what I'm saying so. I hope man, he's not being a depth guy. You know I mean, a veteran guy with that. You know what I'm saying, but Rob Likens, I, I think he'll make the right decision. But, and and I, jo I joke about six and eight. If one of them like just emerges and has a Leonard Hankerson type of senior senior year, yeah, more than welcome. Get, get your butt back on the field then if that's the case. But if not, yeah. the guy that catches the ball is going to be on the field. I think the 2019 Rambo is what we expected out of Mark Pope. They're about the same height, 6'1", you know what I'm saying? They um, got good speed. But we got um, one more spot left. Who do you guys think we should get? But um, let's assume that the NCAA grants us another spot. You know what I'm saying what, what do you guys think positions are in emergency need? Starting. Right. Linebacker and corner for sure. If we're, let's say we have two more spots to give. Linebacker and corner. If we have a third, 
maybe O line, maybe tackle. I don't know. Um, but yeah, the, the linebacker and corner for sure. Yeah, I, I agree. I I I I I second that. I, I would like another DN personally, also. Um, another another one with more snaps, because if that guy DeAndre goes down, which I hope he doesn't, you know, we don't really have a lot of experience there at all, you know. So I, I would like to see definitely cornerback, definitely linebacker, and then if we do get more spots, like it looks like we may. I would like another DN, a proven DN. Yeah, that's a fact. I I take a DN too. I'm saying, but I think um, even if we don't get a DN, I'm saying I think whatever coach comes in, he's gonna he's gonna do um, those young guys justice. I'm saying, and we still wait for Jafari Harvey just to have a a monster year. I'm saying, I I really hope that he's probably like next Reggie Russo, something that something that comes out of Miami organically. So. I'm saying we all had we had a lot of hype for him. By the way, Andrew Ivins, Crystal Ball, um, Tyreek Stevenson to Miami, 100%. So that's a little spoiler alert. I'm saying um, quote unquote spoiler alert. I'm saying we don't know yet. That's 100% sure. So I'm saying we gotta we gotta go off what we got so far. I'm saying but uh, John Ford and as you uh, mentioned earlier, Kane Dub um, Nesta. They both finna run it back. They're gonna run it back. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure you guys appreciate it. The depth only helps. You know what I'm saying? I was always the guy, like we said last week, I was like, man, just get up out of here, man. Let the other guys come in. But that was kind of selfish of me being used to guys being three and done already. But we said debt only helps. You know what I'm saying? Clemson, they get guys to come back their senior year. Um, the Heisman Trophy winner, he was a senior. You know what I'm saying? He could have left last year and he put up monster numbers this senior year. You know what I'm saying, uh, but the D rock, the D line room was gonna have some dogs in it, man. You know what I'm saying, do you guys see it as a heavily rotated interior D line, or it's just gonna you think it's gonna be two alpha males that gets about eighty five percent of the snaps? We go, uh, Kanga. How about it's just nice that the guys that should come back are coming back. How right. how about how about that being such a nice change, you know? Because the guys so far that have declared, I can see. You yeah, know, Roche, Phillips, Russo. Well, Russo opted out before the season started. And then Brevin, I, I I can see it. I can, I see the argument. You know, I don't have to agree with maybe Brevin, you know, but I can see it. He had a really good bowl game. And even and when we were getting blown out by North Carolina, he put up numbers that game too. So I can see it. How about that Miami – is getting guys to stay that could maybe get drafted in the late rounds. Like Nesta could get drafted in the late rounds, I think. Ford, I don't think. Ford definitely needs the time, right? But mm-hmm. Bubba, you know, Cam, like, I, I think that's really refreshing. Not to avoid your question, but, man, we've been complaining for years now. Why are these kids going? Where are they getting their advice from? Like, who's giving them their information? Like, they need to stay. It's just nice. It's really nice that they can stay. So for me, I think that is really underrated that those guys are coming back. Really underrated. It's going to change that D line tremendously having those guys coming back. I think. Yeah. Um, to go back to the guys saying, man, I think the past ten years, I forgot who, but I think Manny Navarro brought it up. I think the average pick for Miami in the draft for the past ten years has been like the late fifth round. So I don't know who's giving these guys advice, man, to leave early, but it's definitely good to see guys stay. And I'm glad that Manny's able to get guys to stay. You know what I'm saying that's that's a huge difference. You see guys, you see uh, schools all over the country, man, that's loaded with seniors, loaded with depth. Those are the best schools. They're going to make a difference. John, what do you think about that? 100% agree. It helps us tremendously. It helps us, you know, when a guy goes down with an injury, you're not like, crap in your pants that, oh, crap, Nesta's, Nesta's down with a, with a knee injury, God forbid. Um, we don't have anybody else behind him. No, now you've got depth. That's that's why you have depth. Guys get hurt. And in the NFL, you can go sign a free agent off the street. You don't have that luxury in college. You need numbers. Um, and that competition breeds improvement because they're all competing against each other. Um, the old guys can teach the young guys some stuff. Uh, yeah, no, obviously it's 
it's a huge, like I thought Nesta was going to, I had a feeling Nesta was going to stay. I feel like he would have declared already if he was going to. Uh, John Ford, I think was a senior. So I think he's taken advantage of that extra year uh, because of COVID. So that's great. And I, I agree. I think he needed it, but yeah. Uh, Nesta, Bubba, Cam, these are guys that contributed a lot this year. And we're getting them back. Normally in the last 10, 15 years, they would have been gone. And it would have been no question in my, not, my mind they were gone. Yeah. Like, I agree. So- I agree. I yes. agree with that. <laughs> yes. Especially Nesta and Bubba. Yeah. They're out of here uh, in the 100%. past 10 years. So yeah. Um, anything on the class of 2022? And then we could freestyle it if you guys want to. I'll just say that us getting T-Rod at the, T-Rob at the time we got him, I mean – Look, guys, and I know we're going to have a lot of conversations about this throughout this entire year. This 2022 class has some guys that are just, they're different, man. There's a bunch of Lawrence, there's a bunch of LTs, and there's a bunch of James Williams in this class, a, a bunch. And Miami's in line for a few of them. And, I, and in my opinion, from everything I'm hearing, currently Miami's in the lead on a few of them. Which is crazy, you know, like, when have we been in the lead and felt good about it, right? Not like, oh, look at all that, and then once the season starts, they start decommitting and going all over the place, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think T-Rob and then, you know, hopefully DVD and Telly and all those guys on the trail are going to lock up some guys. I don't know if you guys saw, but, you know, like that that safety, Kamari Wilson, that plays over at IMG. I think it's IMG, right? Um, yep. He has a great relationship with T-Rock, you know? <laughs> I mean, he... You don't say. I, yeah, and Little, <laughs> Little is a... Little, is, I think with Little, it's going to come down between us and Bama, and I think as long as we win up about nine games, we gonna, we're going to get Little. If we have a really bad season, the only way I think Bama takes him from us. Yeah. Um, and then the linebacker, the top, I mean, dude, we could, we could do a whole video on this. I could just tell you, I'm really, really excited about this. The 2022 class. Did you guys see um, the Nats championship game, Bama secondary? Mm-hmm. It was like a screenshot. Fort Lauderdale, Plantation, Miami, Miami. I'm like, God, yeah. we, we got – I think we need to take care of home first. You know what I'm saying? I know a lot of great teams, they expand throughout the country. You know what I'm saying? But let's take care, let's take care of the guys at home first, man, because we all know South Florida has hella talent, man. And then we could – we could expand a little bit more. I'm saying that's how I'm saying hey, Reese from Louisiana. I'm saying we got guys from California coming here, man. New York. I'm saying I think we need to hit the Midwest a little bit more too. I think the transfer portal, the guys we're getting now from the transfer portal is gonna help with that. If we can turn that into, like you said, nine win seasons, ten win seasons, then we'll start landing the the program changing guys like a Joey Boza or like Amari Cooper. You know, guys like that, that you ask me if, you know, if you ask them if they're going to Miami, they'd laugh <laughs> 10 years ago. But now it's, you know, we're a program on the rise. So, yeah. And I've been peeping um, a little bit at Florida State, man. Mike Norville is trying to take a page out of Manny Diaz's book. He's saying he's getting the hell of transfers. I'm like, oh, Listen, damn. a lot of teams, a lot of teams are going to copy what Manny's doing. Yeah. Look what Florida um, State's doing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Mike Norville. Yeah. He's, I mean, they're loading up over there. They have to, man, because you know I'm saying he's yep. he took he took over a dumpster fire. He really didn't get a chance. Hey, but they're getting, they're getting really good pieces, concrete. Like yeah, they're getting I peep, good pieces. I peep, I peep that, man, because I mean he he has to, man, because 2020 yep. he didn't get it. He didn't really get an off season. You know what I'm saying, and he had to. He, he was dealing with the cars that he had. You know what I'm saying. So right now he's trying to lay the foundation, kind of like what Manny did, trying to change the culture. I'm saying so. I'm a. I'm not going to sleep on Florida State next year, man. Cause <laughs> no, go bounce back quick. For sure, for sure. Anything else, guys? Yeah, um, I'm gonna say that uh, I want Jared Williams to come back, and I think he's gonna announce pretty fast. Uh, it would be nice to have him back. He didn't have a great year, but he he's a solid, solid right tackle. He's got seniority, you know. I think it just solidifies that line even more with depth, uh, good competition. And 
excuse me. And I think there's something happening right now. Like I do, I, I, I would almost bet on it. You know, it's, it's just really strange. Some of the announcements are coming in a position that we don't even have a coach supposedly. <laughs> now, nice. if you're, if you're borderline going to go to the NFL, why would you come back if you don't know who the coach is going to be? I'm just, I would like to pose that to you guys. John, you're, you're borderline at least a fourth round. You know, Nesta would go for fourth or fifth round. I think he would. All right. Would so, you? You, you know, you're borderline and, you know, you're, I don't know what to do. Do you even come back? I, if you go, I don't have a coach, but I'm going to, I decided to come back. Most likely 90% no, but. Like I said earlier, if it's a coach I know that I like that I'm familiar with is coming back all of a sudden, yeah. Yeah, players play for the coaches, man. Mm -hmm. you know so yeah, I'm I'm rocking with you on that, man. Jared Williams, the, I, I keep forgetting about him too, man. If he comes back, that definitely be big for the O line because we already have a we have pretty good depth at the O line. I can't yep. forget about um, Isaiah yep. Walker and um, Rivers, Rivers, Jalen Rivers, man. So I'm. I'm not, I'm not too worried about the O-line. I'm saying I hope the depth plays out and those young guys still got um, Donaldson coming back. I'm saying he came back and kind of finally the guy that he was supposed to be. Yeah. Showed a lot of flashes. I'm saying um, going back to Rambo, man, I'm a little scared cheering for him out loud because I have a history of cheering for players. Uh, Jaren Williams, I was high on him, and Christian Williams, <laughs> and they both went to USF. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> – you got your guy, man. You got. Your, hey, look. I like I said in full disclosure. When I went back and really watched them, I, I'm I'm more excited. I'm more excited than I was originally. I, I'm not gonna lie. But yeah, I, I'm telling you, man. Not not trying. I think something's happening right now. I think there's some coaching stuff going down right now. Like as we're Literally talking, as we speak, they're talking. And I think some of the kids know for sure. I know some of the kids know about a departure. I just don't know if they know about who's the hire. But if I'm going to speculate and I'm going to guess, because that's the part of the show that we're doing, right? We're just freestyling. So yeah. it just it's real coincidence. It's just real coincidence that both D tackles on a position that we don't even have a coach officially on the staff right now mm -hmm. announce. Within yeah. what a couple hours of each other? You, you, think it's, you think it's um what percentage you give it for being for being Jess Simpson? You know, I, I'm I'm in a minority about this, man. I think you guys know where I stand. Ooh. I think yeah. I I think I think I just think there's a there's been somebody else in play the whole time and they've been just trying to figure out the DC role and if Ooh, he so. wants to bring if he wants to bring a coach. It's just been too much misinformation getting put out there to hide something like it just doesn't make sense if you follow the canes like we follow the canes tell <clears throat> excuse me tell me another time that there's been this many different rumors this many different rumors and then with people that know what they're talking about like really like, oh i and then mm -hmm. i just think and you guys saw last night with the guy uh Furman. he's like you know they're telling the players right now that Baker's fired. That's that's what he that's what he said on uh, Kane Sport. He's like they're telling the players right now. I mean that guy's information is wishy washy, right? Sometimes he hits, sometimes he misses. But come on, he's. I I just I would be shocked if it's a boring it's a boring thing. I would be shocked if it's Simpson and and Manny's calling the defense. I'd be okay with it because I think Manny, I think Manny has something to prove as a DC coming back, you know, cause it's, he's going to be coaching for his job basically. Cause if he doesn't go out and get a DC guys, like they're giving him the money to do and he takes the defense over and they don't do, you don't see that jump that you're supposed to see. Yeah, you know what the board yeah. of trustees are going to say and say, Hey, we gave you the money. You just didn't want to hire anybody. Yeah. What's up with that, man? I wonder if Miami's like, Miami's like the only program that does that, man. I'm like, I'm tired of all the secrets, man. Like, talking to my boy Brandon, man. He's like, bro, just let me know. Stop with the suspense. Like, let's get it out there. I'm kind of which maybe the, maybe the D line coach or the DC's already in there. Had a conversation with the players, and they're like, all right, 
I'm staying. Let's get it. Well, here's a question. I, I, I'm going to go to you, John. Ready? Mm -hmm. We all complain, me included, right? When they, didn't do a, when they didn't do a search, when they hired men. Then they took their time and they got a really good offensive staff. Like, I think we have an offensive staff to compete straight up. I agree. Is it could it be that he's following that same blueprint and he's just and again I have no in from side information. I'm just trying to put pieces together. And could it be that you know maybe some maybe a coach he was looking at he you know was still coaching and they had to wait until he was done? Could it be that you know uh T Rob has got more of a title than just DB coach? Maybe he's co DC. You know, uh, I mean, remember, he ran that defense over there in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. So it's not like he's a rookie. I, I just, I would be surprised, guys. I'm telling you, we're going to be talking about this next Wednesday. And I can tell you, I would be surprised if it's a, if it's a boring hire, because why the wait? Why not just say Simpson? And why not say Manny? Like, what, what's the big, what are we waiting on? Right? So what would be, concrete, what would be the reason they would wait to say Manny's taking the defense over? And Simpson's coming in as a D line coach at this point. Yeah, I don't, I don't really see any weight at all. I don't see no weight at all. So I think, especially with all the talk going around with Baker, you know what I'm saying? They they know people are pissed off about that, man. So I definitely think they're trying to make a move. Maybe they're trying to work something out with Baker, um, put him into another role or trying to hook him up with another job, whatever. But that's man. what I think is happening. They're trying to hook him up. Baker's his boy, and, you know, he's trying to – he's talking to maybe other teams, trying to help him out, hook him up with – you know, have – help him line something up before – before this. That's what I think is happening behind the scenes. I think Baker is gone. That's my prediction. Worst-case scenario, Manny and T. Rob are running the defense next year, and Baker's gone. <laughs> Best case, I think, like you said, too many planets are aligning right now. These guys are saying they're staying – like all at a very suspicious time. Um, yeah, it's, something big is coming. I don't know if it's like like the next, like a D-line coach and a new DC or, or what, but something, a big splash hire is coming. And I'm, I'm excited about it. Yeah, you, gotta, you guys got to remember, man, Manny, I'm saying he's been around the block. He's been with some pretty good coaches. Uh, mm. Bobby Bowden, Mike, um, Mike Brown, um, the guy at Louisiana Tech. Um, damn, I forgot his name. Um, damn. I'm going to say Dan Mullen. No, uh, uh, he was a Mullen, right? He was a Mullen. Yeah. Uh, I can't think of the guy at Louisiana Tech, man. Uh, I'm drawing a blank, too. Yeah, man, his name is his name is on the tick of my tongue, man. But yeah, he's been a, he's been around the block, man. So he kind of he knows what, what it takes to have a good program. You know what I'm saying? He's been with Texas, he knows that you got to spend money to get good coaches. You know what I'm saying? So that's one thing I could say about Manny. You know what I'm saying if if there's a change to be made, it looks like he's willing to do it. You know what I'm saying even if Blake Baker, you know what I'm saying he's probably going to hook him up. Like, hey, you could. I'm saying maybe you want to go back to Louisiana Tech. I'm saying spread your wings a little bit more. I'm saying we'll holler at you later when you develop more. I'm saying maybe you'll just get an SEC job. I told you guys in the chat, man. Remember, remember Blake Baker was up for that LSU gig? <laughs> Question concrete. Yes or no? Baker's on the staff in 2021. Oh, man. Good enough for you sitting yesterday. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. John? I don't think so. I agree. I agree with you guys. I agree. Yeah. He needs to be. I'm I mean we we already seen enough. We've seen enough already, especially this year. I'm saying even in games we won, I'm saying with the defense, I'm saying we blew they kind of blew the cheese a little bit. I'm saying besides the Duke game, which I'm saying everybody I'm saying pass Duke around like a little hope. So <laughs> <laughs> I I I just there has to be more to this if it's Manny and Simpson. It just there it because there's absolutely no reason why it hasn't been announced already if it's those two guys, in my opinion. Yeah, you know, 
To stay on the safe side, I, I to stay on the safe side, I'd probably go with John. You know what I'm saying? T Rob and Manny, co DCs, you know what I'm saying, yep. and we roll with that. <clears throat> or if we get a an established D line coach, if we get someone like Chris Wilson, maybe T Rob and um Chris Wilson are co DCs and Manny kind of oversees. I would be happy. Like, if we get Chris Wilson, I, that to me, that's a big hire. Yeah, that's a big hire. That's not he's, like, a, oh, he's... we got Chris Wilson. The guy's up for DC at Colorado, and look at his right. resume, like John said. Right. Like that's a big, that's a big hire. You know I, we, I would be happy. We can't say that we can't afford him because right trustees willing to drop the bag on him. So, man, it's all about pulling. I guess pulling the trigger and seeing what these guys' heads is at. You know, you think we got a, a better chance at Chris Wilson now that we got T. Rob. I'll just say this: having T. Rob, we can get anybody we want. That's how highly <laughs> that's how highly he's thought of. Shit, let's look, get Urban Meyer then. But Shoot. but concrete, straight up, who taught or who mentored T. Rob? Muschamp. Would you not put Muschamp in the top three DCs in the entire country? I, I love yeah, I love Muschamp as a DC. Like he even when top ten all time. Yeah. So, even, when he, even when it was at Florida, like Florida was ass, but that defense is always solid. And that's my point. My point is he's so respected. I haven't heard one negative thing, and, and unless it's someone that's been upset that they didn't get T Rob, you know. I, I <laughs> all the people that know what they're talking about are just like, this guy is the so does he come over here when, when he doesn't know who the DC is gonna be or who the D line coach is gonna be or when he Mike, had options? The micro guys. <laughs> They hate on T Rob too. Man. So you're saying the Jordan Battles and the Josh Jobs, we won't be losing those guys anymore. We're gonna flip some hats that are gonna say Miami with that okay. guy. He yeah. don't lose all those battles. And then again, DVD will get a chance now that he's gonna get bumped up. Uh, you know, all signs are pointing that he's gonna get bumped up and promoted, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't know this, and we've talked about this before, but a lot of recruits that got that Banda got. DVD was instrumental, very, very heavy in that, you know. So he, my, now that he gets a chance to be a, a paid full time coach, what do you think? Th- I think he's a star. I think that's a star in the making right there. And if he gets a chance, let's say D Rock, uh, T Rock does safeties and corners like they already have him, but he's gonna need an assistant and he's asked two different positions. Can you imagine DVD learning under T Rock? Right, what. Man, my Man. biggest fear is just like before all this thing blossomed out, is that the world is just gonna go to shit <laughs> before we get to see this <laughs> this thing blossom out, man. I, I've been saying that ever. I think the uh, the 2008 class we got. I'm like, no, not 2008. The uh, 2018 class we got. I'm like, man, these some dogs, man. I just hope the world doesn't go to shit before they before we get to see them blossom out, man. But, I'm saying, who knows, man. Who knows? I'm rocking the DVD thing does sound great. I'm saying T Rob's coaching DB. So yeah, DVD could um he could help coach behind him, learn under him. You know what I'm saying that we could make some things happen, make this thing shake up the way it's supposed to be shaked up. You know I'm saying and I'm think- still hearing that Telly Telly is getting uh promoted as well. Yeah, what so, is that? Um special teams, maybe? That's what I heard. I, I have not heard me personally. And I don't know everything, right? I just know a little bit. Uh, I don't think Packy is going to be uh, let go. I think he's going to still be on the staff. Unless Baker gets a job and takes Packy or something like that. That might happen, I guess. I just thought about that. But other than that, I think – and 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 if in all – in seriousness, if you look up Packy, you can say certain things that are definitely not great, but he recruited some guys for us. Mm-hmm. Those 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 up north boys are all his. Oh really? Wow. So that's his region, his recruiter region up there. He landed he landed those guys. I mean, he's on there as their recruiter, you know. Um, and you know, the striker position was not terrible. Nah, it definitely it did. Well, I'm not gonna say it improved because I. Well, Gil. I love. Gilbert I love. Good. Yeah, he played good. I like. I like Romoli, um Romeo Finley a lot. You know what I'm but Gilbert. Oh. So, you know, like, and then there was like, oh, look, you know, he, he, special teams, he had nobody back that he could catch the ball and, and he did good because look at our two kickers. Yeah, but look at the kickers he had before that. Yeah. Terrible. 
So it's not that, I mean, <laughs> like, I think that it, there's, there's mixed information out there with him. I guess it's whatever the side you want to lean on it. And I'm, and I'm a glass half full guy. So if we retain <laughs> him, I, I, I'm happy that he has all the good stuff, you know? Hey man, you is a positive guy. Cause I remember um, the UNC game. We was like, oh hell, he was like, just be patient guys. I believe that you came up. I believe in you. And it went to shits. You know what's crazy is though is that I think that this, you know, and we're gonna talk a lot, guys, in the next couple of years. So we'll know our yeah. predictions and our and our ideas. I just think all this is aligning really good for Manny if he makes the right moves to like think about it. Just think about it. Offense issue. A really good offensive staff comes in. Not just ah, oh, gotta go. Oh, look at the names he brought in. All three of those people were all offensive coordinators. Yeah, time, bro. Right? Like that, you, you can't take anything away from Manny. Like at the end of the day, he he he's putting his all into this thing, man. So I'm definitely giving that to him. I think he's making the change. Go ahead, John. I was mentioning one thing because I keep anytime you know he's making these moves. I keep thinking about Butch Davis in the '90s. Thank God for Butch. He wasn't like that didn't happen during the social media era because it took him a while to build it back up. Can you imagine those losses in 99 when he lost to East Carolina in 98 when he got throttled by Syracuse? Oh, my God. We would have wanted his head on Twitter if Twitter existed. Oh, yeah. But he had time to build it up. But by the time he left in 2000, look what his staff was. He had Larry Coker as a play caller. Greg Schiano on defense. Mm. Um, Art Kehoe on O-line, uh, Don Solinger, one of my all-time favorite Canes assistant coaches, coaching the, the running backs and the special teams. Randy Shannon coaching the linebackers. I mean, it was like a Hall of Fame assistant yeah. coach. Yeah. And he, Butch, Butch had his strengths. Like, he could develop guys. He was a disciplinarian, but he wasn't the best, like, X's and O's guy. He could yeah. recruit, too. He could recruit. He could find, like, diamonds in the rough, but he surrounded himself with the best staff. Yeah. And he got guys to play for him too, man. So that was, yeah. yeah. I mean, he came from um, off of Jimmy Johnson's tree. So it's not surprising. Concrete. You said something in the beginning of the show when you were comparing Alabama, right? I thought about this while I was driving the other day and I just started laughing. I'm so excited that we got the staff on offense. We have, we hired T Rob and we might get another. Bro, look at the analysts of Alabama. Not not even the coaching on the field. <laughs> look who the analysts are at Alabama. Oh, like, boy, strong. Man, that's... Dude, you got to be kidding me. Like, that's who goes over there to be an analyst. And he's probably happy as hell oh, he's so to be an analyst. <laughs> he's like, I'm cool with this. I'm getting paid good. And, and we're winning. Ring. Yeah, <laughs> And I'm learning. I'm learning a lot under – the greatest coach of all time. So that guy, that guy got, I got to tell you, I was not a saving fan about five or six years ago. I, I was hating on him. I was like, I don't like him. I got to, oh, he's man. the best I've seen. I love saving, man. College, but, he's the best I've seen. Yeah. I, I always have respect. Like even, I was never reminding Dolphin fans, but I can imagine how you guys felt when he left. You know I'm saying, but every, I didn't like Florida one. And then when he beat Florida in 09 in the SU championship game, I was like, okay, I love saving even more. But a guy that I didn't like at first, but I kind of grew to respect is um, Dabo Sweeney. Saying at first, I'm like, man, this guy, he just runs his mouth all the damn time. Like, I'm tired of hearing him. But what do you think makes him great? Because you, you, I think you said it a little while ago about somebody else, in my opinion. I think what makes Dabo straight is that his look at the staff he puts around himself. Yeah. Fired. Who was that? Uh, was that Kevin Silly fired? You know, yeah, when they put up seventy on them, right? Wasn't that like when they put? I think it was Sir. No, it wasn't Syracuse. Was it, Syracuse? it was like West Virginia. West Virginia. West Virginia. Yeah, yeah. He fired him, and then Kevin Steele goes, "What? What? Top three DC in the country right now?" You're right. And look so, at look at the guys he puts around himself, so he yeah. can go on the media and say whatever he wants. Oh, how about this high? We haven't talked about this. How about that Notre Dame DC hire? Mm, I didn't know about that. Do you know who Notre Dame got as a DC? Who's the number one DC everybody wanted this year? 
<laughs> if I told you, wait, if I told you in December, right? I'll, I'll say rentables. Okay. Well, who would you say? Available. Uh, uh, yeah. Like, if you would have said in December, if I would have said you get to pick a, a DC from right, right now, who would you pick? I would say Charles Strong. And you got Venables? All right. What about uh, Marcus Freeman from Cincinnati? Mm, okay, yeah. Okay. yeah. He was the hot. He, every, look, look at all the schools that wanted him. LSU, Miami, Auburn, yep. Notre yep. Dame. <laughs> like, and he picked Notre Dame for the, that. I mean, that you've seen what that guy did against Georgia with three stars. Yeah. Those mm-hmm. were three star players out there and almost beat Georgia. And you've seen what he did all year. Like, uh, that dude is a star. And then look what he gets rewarded. He goes to a big dog program, big check, with better athletes. He's going to throw a party out there. Man, Notre Dame. God damn. Everybody don't want to go there, man. It's not a – it just seems just like a boring school, man. <laughs> to us, because we beat them. Yeah. Yeah, True. yeah but – From like, Miami, fan, Miami fans' perspective. Yeah, well, they got they got like no num they got no names on the back of their jersey. They're just plain old practice jerseys. Like I'm just tired of seeing them, man. Man, hell of a program though. I gotta give it to them. Their history speaks for itself. That coach has done a good job there. Yeah, they got they got Rudy. As much as I can't stand him, yeah. Brian Kelly's done very good there. He's yeah. done a good job. I have to give him credit. He's done a good job. Yeah, he's definitely going to be there for a long time. I'm saying he had his downs. I'm saying, yeah, terrible. I think, was it 2000? Was it 18? That was a terrible year for him, or 19? He had a horrible year, but he bounced back like a month. You got to give these guys time nowadays because they got to bring their own guys in, you know? But with social media and us, the fans, we're killing people. Six and seven. Your first year, get out of there. You're fired. <laughs> you know yeah, I, mean? I, I didn't. I didn't think that. I didn't think that was fair at all because I definitely seen the effort from him. So I'm like, you can't. I'm like, calm down. He doesn't even have like his recruits in there, right? And he, this is the first gig at a head coaching job. Like, yeah, I hate. I hate to do the Dabo comparison all the time, but hell, Dabo was a damn receiver coach. You know what I'm saying, came into Clemson, went six and six, whatever. So, and look what they got now. Like you say you got to give them time to to build. Put input their vision into the program. You know I'm saying, and once they got their vision in the program, then we could properly judge them. Like, okay, this is you at full power right now. Okay, Wasn't so let's like five and seven or six and six his first year. Right, yeah, yeah. right. They be bought in that crazy class. Period. Yeah, we're gonna learn a lot about Manny on this hire because here's the thing, guys: is he betting on himself or? Is he like, no, I'm, I got to learn how to be a head coach and I'm going to go out and get someone that's proven and I'm going to manage. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to become a CEO. Or he's like, no, F that. I'm going to, you know, I'm, uh, it, that's what I am so excited to see. Yeah. Like, I, I, because everything else he's done, and this is unpopular with some fans, I love everything else he's done. Every move he's done, I love so far. The E knows whatever, but he learned from it, right? But he's, He's done it. Yeah. I need to see, is Baker on staff? Does Manny decide he's going to take the defense over and call it? Or he learned again, is like, I got to be a better head coach and I'm going to bring somebody that's proven. I'm going to, that's what I want to see. Yeah. Let's be honest. Who? I mean, we was all pretty excited when Enos came in. Right. Maybe was, I, I, was, I, I was with I it. Was. I'm like, okay, he's a quarterback coach. He, I was. he came from Bama. Albeit, like I told you guys the other day, the offense he tried to run, we just we just didn't have the personnel for it. Those slow development plays, like you need a top notch offensive line for that. You know what I'm saying so. He just got hired at Maryland, I think yesterday or day before yesterday. He just got hired yeah. at Maryland, right? Yeah, got to be the head coach at Maryland. He was the OC at Bama. Um, mm, that makes sense. Yeah, wow. Well, um, that makes sense. Yeah, and you know, he was actually supposed to take over as OC after he left, so. Yeah, connections are big, you know saying, and mm-hmm. Cincinnati, shoot, they just almost beat Georgia, and he was the running back coach. <laughs> I don't know how the running backs I, did, but hey, man, look, we're gonna, I, I, I'm gonna learn a lot about Manny's character, like his personality on this hire, and I'm good. With, yeah. like, if he calls the defense, and there's a solid D line coach, I'm fine with that. It's, it's not the exciting hire, but he's a good DC, I think when he's plugged in 
Yeah, I think it's gonna be a lot of growth if he takes that CEO role. I think that's yeah. a, a hell of a lot of growth, man. You know what I'm saying just focus on bringing the guys that need to be bought in, right? And get your staff together. Make sure you got the right defense coordinator guy. You know what I'm saying and just take off from there. You know what I'm saying, but before Manny got hired, I had a I was talking to some guys about this, man. Well, who was on you guys' top list after Mark Rick left? I think. Sorry, John. Mine was easy. Mario Cristobal. Me too. Pay the guy whatever it takes. Get his <laughs> ass back down here. Bring him home. You sure, after um, the season he had this year? Or yes. Gonna, yes. Gonna, yeah. yeah. Here's why. FIU let go of him after one bad year. I think it was right after they lost T.Y. Hilton. And yeah. they have not recovered since. I think he had a lot of um, – I spoke to some guys that went to FIU. I think it was more like a, an off-the-field thing, too. But he let yeah, him go. other things have contributed, but I mean, he turned that into at the time a legitimate program, which I never thought. And look, full disclosure, I went to FIU. I never thought that that would be a legitimate program of any kind. <laughs> he turned it into one, and um, and yeah, like I, they made a huge mistake. I mean, he wasn't going to be there forever, obviously, but they made a huge mistake letting him go. Yeah. Oregon would be making the same mistake. I think the guy's a hell of a coach, and he just need. A little bit of time. He just lost Justin Herbert too. How do you replace that guy in one in, in a COVID season? Facts. You know? Who had a hell of a rookie I, year? I, yeah. I will. I will tell you this: the the couple guys that I talked to to try to get information early so we can talk about it. Uh, I've met a few guys since then, but the, the guys, the original guys, are ex alumni players. You know, with rings, and I can tell you that all of them rave about Mario like all of them are like you know until the administration doesn't wake up and goes out and gets more I mean I've been hearing this for a few years now okay mm -hmm. like before they hired Mark Rick they were like they need to go out and get Mario like if they get Mario this will change everything and and I've heard this consistently like just consistently and then if you look at Mario like first of all he's an A-plus recruiter number one A-plus recruiter top one of the top recruiters like, why do you think he went over with Saban? Just a flow. You know, um, and then then he goes to Oregon, does really well. Okay, Justin, you know, the guy, uh, Justin Herbert, maybe. But look at the recruiting classes this guy's getting to go to Oregon. Right. They're loading up right now. They're just loading up. And they got an easy-ass conference. They're always going to be 9, 10 wins, even on a bad year, you know. So – He's smart. They just, oh, Auburn might go get him. Oh, no, you don't. Auburn came and said, here's some more money. <laughs> like, everybody else sees it. We just don't see it here at Miami about Mario. Like, I think Mario, I think he's one of the best coaches in football, personally. Yeah. I think he was he was my top pick, and then it was Manny. And then it was, um, I think it was somebody like Outland. It's like John Gruden or, or Rex Ryan, because their name was getting thrown around a lot. Man, but right, speaking I was happy. I was happy when they hired Manny. I'm not going to lie. I was like, oh, because I yeah. think he, had a, he was a good DC. Yeah. I was relieved because when we lost that pinstripe bowl and the next day Mark Rick steps down, I'm like, this is like a low point for this program. Yeah. yeah. When, yeah. um, when, um, I think it, I forgot what, I think it was before the pinstripe bowl, Manny had an interview. Uh, he was pretty much saying, like, this needs to happen. Like, now he wasn't calling out names, but you could tell he was talking about the offense. Like, like, yeah, our defense is doing this, but, you know, it's hard not to give up points where we got our backs against the wall the whole time. Like, yo, I'm rocking with this guy. He knows, like, the changes that need to be made. And as soon as he came in, he made some changes, man. But <laughs> speaking of Florida players, man, what's up with Joaquin, man, and dogging T-Raw about – think that's just a mic rump thing? I, exactly. <laughs> I think <laughs> that, that's – you know, that's – and there's a lot of guys that feel that Mike rump didn't get a fair shake because they wouldn't let him do certain things, you know? Yeah. And uh, I already told you, I've been on record. I think Mike Rumble's a good teacher. Yeah. Uh, he just didn't land guys consistently. And after this year, missing this year when we needed corners, I think that was tough. Plus the defense not playing so well, plus the corner play being below average. I just think – and his – I'm glad to hear that his contract – was over and they didn't fire him they just didn't you know re-up him 
I like him going out better that way because I respect that man a lot. I, and I'll stand by what I said last week. I think that guy would be a good NFL coach. Yeah, agreed. Probably would. Yeah. I remember what, that, that's his boy from the old one team, so. Yeah, man. Hey, yeah, you I'm, can't, I'm not surprised, what? man. Can't play I wonder what Ed Reed had to say about it. Like, man, let's go to the league. Get up out of here, man. You know I'm saying? Ed not- Reed, huh? Speaking of Ed Reed, how strange is it that there's rumors that Ed and Banda weren't getting along and Banda's the first guy to go? Oof. That's a good That's a good one right there. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I think, I, thought we bought, I think we brought that up last week, how they wasn't, how they was kind of bumping heads, so... Hey, maybe he gets a little along better with T Rob, but I'd rather have oh. Ed Reed. I'd rather have Ed Reed be a chief of staff than Vander stand as a safety coach. So. <laughs> I mean, I, I I I would be unbelievably shocked if Ed Reed didn't have a lot to do with that te- that T Rob hire. Mm. <laughs> a lot to do, <laughs> you know. I would be yeah, shocked. T Rob was one of a lot of places, man. Yes. You know what I'm saying so yeah, that that was I mean it was a shock that he came to Miami. You know what I'm saying we thought he was gonna stay in the SEC somewhere and just... well I heard him at Florida, Auburn, and LSU. Those are the three names they were after him that I heard. And then the guy that Florida ended up getting McGriff, we were in I mean, it was literally and I think we were talking about it away from the camera. It was either that guy or T Rob who was like right there. And once Florida kind of I think it's Florida, right? They got McGriff. Yeah. Wesley McGriff, right? Mm-hmm. I felt really good to get T Rob, but then his name popped up at Auburn. And I was like, no. Yeah, and he's he had a couple like, stints there. So that's his that's his alma mater. So I was like, I was kind of like, yeah. uh, it's a rap. Yeah, I, I, I felt the same way. I felt <laughs> the same way. I was like, man. But I think uh I mean we'll see, man. I mean, the guy, I mean, he's gonna produce, dude. Like he's in his backyard. He's a killer over here recruiting. I mean, he's already got some pieces. And, and you know, I think the transfer portal might something great might happen for us at that position too. So hey, I don't come in with some pieces right off the bat. Yeah. I mean, we already the freshman coming in and hopefully the transfer portal. Hopefully, we don't know yet. We don't we don't know. We don't know. Somebody somebody might come in that we really want. So I don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm but fellas, man, we we hitting a little bit over an hour, man. You know what I'm saying, uh, we'll call it a night. You know what I'm saying, appreciate everybody for watching. You know what I'm saying, like I said once again, check out all of our channels. I put everybody's channel link in the description, man. And so always remember, it's all about this you. Good night. Thanks. Mr. Hundred Time Team, keep it one thousand. Fuck your hoe by the thousand. Don't fuck the other thousand. Stacking money by the thousand. I'ma stack my money by the thousand. In the booty club, we wild.